Welcome back, defenders. Jake here. Ukraine's finally done it. Bridge and base in occupied Crimea goes boom. Explosions and an extraordinary event have occurred at the Cursed Strait Bridge. So cue the music. That song's never going to get old. So I was confident at some point this summer Ukraine was going to successfully strike the bridge again. Now the rail line wasn't hit this time. Rail traffic is still operational, at least in one direction. But here's the bridge for passenger vehicles. And you can see one section has completely fallen over, while the other one has been displaced. So here's a video showing the damage uh, from the rail line. I'm no civil engineer, but that does not look like an easy fix. And the other side of the bridge, uh, only slightly displaced. So the first day after the attack, the bridge was completely shut down, but after 24 hours, I guess the Russians just put a ramp right here, and they're allowing civilian passenger vehicles to use the road again. So the other two lanes completely shut down, but these two lanes, they're letting cars go each direction, single file, and they just put up a ramp so that vehicles can get over it. They're not allowing heavy trucks, uh, they're not trying to stress the bridge, but they are allowing civilians to pass. So this is what uh, the Crimean Bridge currently looks like. Ukrainian Crimea looks beautiful. We just got to get rid of those Russians. So how did Ukraine do it? And we're going to talk about that. But let me first welcome back a returning sponsor on this channel. The sponsor of today's video is Surfshark VPN. And Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that encrypts all of your data while online to add an extra layer of protection to keep your personal information safe from hackers and trackers. Aside from its military-grade encryption, why is Surfshark the best VPN on the market? And it's because it's the only VPN that allows installation on an unlimited number of devices, all on one account, for one price. Surfshark can be great for sending or receiving files securely online or finding great shopping deals. But something I like about Surfshark is when using various streaming services, such as Netflix, it allows me to unlock different content in other countries. For example, here in the United States on Netflix, we don't have the latest Dune movie. Later this year, I want to go to theaters and see Dune Part 2. This is probably the movie I'm most looking forward to. And Netflix doesn't have the latest one. It came out like three years ago. Currently, it's exclusive on HBO Max, and I don't want to pay for HBO Max. So if I pull up Surfshark, all I have to do is change my country location to, for example, Australia. Then just wait a second, hit refresh on the page, boom. I can now watch the latest Dune movie. Likewise, I can change my country location to other countries around the world to unlock fantastic TV shows and movies to watch. There is no risk in trying Surfshark VPN, as they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Use the promo code JAKEBRO and sign up today for an exclusive deal, and get an extra three months for free. Thank you so much to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Now, Ukraine successfully struck the bridge with some drone boats. A Ukrainian drone boat attack nearly 400 miles, that's about... 600 kilometers from the closest shore that Kyiv controls would mark a new level of capability. So here are the satellite images the Russians released showing the Ukrainian drone boats on their way to the bridge. 
And the scale of this attack is incredible. Just think about it. 400 miles, or 600 kilometers, assuming these drone boats were going pretty fast, 40 miles per hour, that means that these drone boats uh, were sailing through the Black Sea for over 10 hours. Why did they potentially launch from Snake Island and not the proper coastline? And it's to cut down on the travel distance. Think about the fuel requirements or the battery requirements, however this thing was powered. And this is what the drone looked like according to the Russians. Basically looks like a jet ski. So after the last year and a half, the Ukrainians have been experimenting and developing new drone boat technology. And what hit the bridge two days ago was a jet ski packed with explosives. So this either had to have an internet signal in order to be remotely operated, or it was pre-programmed to go this distance, to just sail around Sevastopol on a 10-hour trip. I'm impressed. This is incredible. This is a huge accomplishment for the Ukrainian military. And hopefully they've cracked the formula how to rig a jet ski <laughs> packed with explosives to go such a long distance over a long period of time. I think there's going to be more of these kinds of attacks, considering this one was successful. So here's the reaction from the Russians. Dmitry at War Translated has been monitoring the Telegram channels. This is what he says. A rather interesting morning for the occupiers. They're shaken and properly mad. But the main line for propagandists right now is that the strike on the bridge is due to Ukraine's lack of success on the front. I'm pretty confident if Ukraine was successful in their counteroffensive and reached the Sea of Azov, they would have struck the bridge anyways. Some are saying the incident is not going to affect the battlefield in any way. The attempts to downplay this event are very real in Russian media. There's usual talk about red lines and the grain deal, but it's not to say that they've been broken, but to laugh at the fact that nothing is going to be done again. A couple polls asking if a nuclear strike is now warranted. Moral of the story, don't build illegal bridges in the illegal annexed territory. So let me share just a little bit of Kremlin State TV and how they're reacting to the destruction of their bridge again. Необходима сейчас какая-то победа, так называемая. Им нужно вот эту депрессию, да, которая у них сейчас... Если не получат в ответ по щам, то будет и третий теракт. Совершенно верно, совершенно верно. То, что мы начали были, наносить были. удары по энергетической инфраструктуре, мы быстро прекратили их Нет, наносить. Не, не быстро, Целей мы никак. не достигли. Свет, газ, вода у жителей украинской столицы и Украины наличествуют. The entire clip is four and a half minutes from Russian Media Monitor. I'll link it down below if you want to watch the whole thing. But they're, they're furious on Kremlin State TV that nothing is being accomplished from their side. So when the bridge was struck last September or October, that's when Russia pivoted and announced they were going after Ukraine's energy infrastructure. The goal was to freeze out the Ukrainians over the winter time to get them to surrender. They were telling their people, we can do it. We can destroy Ukraine's entire energy infrastructure. They won't have lights, they won't have gas, they won't have heat or water. I mean, if you've seen pictures of Kyiv and what it looks like today, the lights are on, the water is running, people have gas, electricity, heat, all that stuff, so. What is Russia's reaction going to be this time when they didn't even follow through on their threats from the last time? I, my favorite reaction has to be from Depressed Gherkin. Depressed Gherkin is my favorite Gherkin. But this is what he posted on Telegram. The security services spent thousands of hours checking the armrests in cars entering the bridge, and in a year and a half, they could not put up the boom barriers. Boom gates or boom barriers are used to protect the parked fleets or important strategic structures, such as bridges and dams. 
from the penetration of enemy ships and floating mines. So when Russia, a year ago, was bragging about how heavily fortified and defended this bridge was, we've got satellites, we've got jets, we've got scuba divers, we've got uh, air defense systems, battleships, and even dolphins. Dolphins were protecting the Crimean Bridge. In a year and a half, they couldn't put up a boom barrier in order to stop a jet ski packed with explosives. So I imagine Putin is furious. This is a huge embarrassment for him yet again. And I bet you those dolphins are firing. Why couldn't they see the jet ski attack coming? Here's the reaction from ordinary Russians. Uh, it's summertime in Crimea. This is peak tourist time, I guess. And according to the Russian Hospitality Union, about 50,000 Russian tourists are currently in Crimea, and they're all panicking. They're trying to see how can they get off the peninsula. Now, yes, uh, civilians are being allowed to use the bridge. That ramp was put down over the crack. But Russia is still recommending to all their people that they just drive through the occupied territories in order to get back into Russia. This is some Mad Max Fury Road stuff. They want civilians to drive through Melitopol, Berdansk, and Mariupol when they're being routinely struck with storm shadow missiles. I, I don't know what to say. Putin claims there will be a response to the Crimean bridge attacks. What specifically will this be? Last time it was a declaration they're going to destroy Ukraine's entire energy infrastructure. This time, people are thinking it revolves around the grain deal. Now, there was a coordinated air attack last night. All six caliber cruise missiles were shot down in addition to 31 out of 36 Shahid drones. I don't think this was Russia's big response. This was probably a pre-planned, pre-coordinated nightly attack, but it could revolve around the grain. Kremlin says Black Sea grain deal has de facto ended. So as of, I think, yesterday, July 17th, that was the official day the grain deal ended. Now, Turkey for weeks has been saying the grain deal is going to continue. It's just going to continue. We don't care what Russia says. Russia has been saying we don't want to participate in the grain deal anymore. It's not Russian people who are going to be food insecure or starving. It's people in Africa, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. That's where most Ukrainian grain exports go. So we don't really know what's going to happen the next couple days. Turkey in the past has made declarations that their warships are just going to continue escorting Ukrainian grain ships, and if the Russian Black Sea Fleet wants to fire on them, that would be an Article 5 NATO event. So it's up to Russia. What the fear is, is that Russia is just going to destroy the port in Odessa. A coordinated attack, I'm sure the air defense systems there are heavily fortified, but Russia could try. They could try Kinzhal and Caliber and Iskander and everything they got to just go after the port in order to stop any grain ships from being able to use that port. We don't know what's going to happen in the next couple days regarding the port city of Odessa. Here's the response from President Zelensky. This is what he has to say on Twitter. There's a five-minute video that's subtitled. I'll link it down below. Ukraine's position has always been, and will be as clear as possible, no one has the right to destroy the food security of any nation. If a bunch of people somewhere in the Kremlin think that they supposedly have the right to decide whether food will be on the table in different countries, Egypt or Sudan, Yemen or Bangladesh, China or India, Turkey or Indonesia, then the world has an opportunity to show that blackmail is not allowed to anyone. Africa has the right to stability. Asia has the right to stability. Europe has the right to stability. Last year, the world took the right action regarding the Russian threat to food security. 
Together with Turkey and the UN, we launched the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Its results are eloquent. Almost 33 million tons of agricultural products were exported to 45 countries. This is Russia's plan to starve these 45 countries to apply pressure to the NATO alliance or EU countries to abandon their support for Ukraine. Russia is willing to weaponize food and famine to get what they want, to control the occupied territories in perpetuity forever. It's not going to work, but what has Russia been trying the last year and a half that does work? Here's the response from the United States, Secretary of State Blinken. Russia is weaponizing food. U.S. to help Ukraine with exports after the grain deal collapse. What's the plan? We don't know yet, but uh, people around the world are working on it. Including China. China is ready to join the negotiations on the continuation of the grain agreement. China, if you really want to help, if you really want to force the Russians to continue allowing the grain exports, then you could threaten to participate in economic sanctions. You could tell Russia this is a red line they can't cross, starving out 45 other nations around the world that depend on this food. China has the power. We'll see if they do anything with it the next couple days. Let's check in on the battlefields. Ukraine claims territory taken around Bakhmut. Russia is bringing in their reserves. So this is a pretty incredible reversal, given that I don't think Ukraine, I don't think Bakhmut is the main focus of their counteroffensive. But this is where they seem to be having the most success. So when we get out the ruler, the Russians, as of two months ago, were almost about to take this road on their way to capturing the village of Chasivyar. And the Ukrainians have reversed them all the way back to the village of Klashivka. And this is six and a half kilometers. So this is six and a half kilometers that the Russians fought really hard to get around the flanks of Bakhmut. And it's been reversed since Ukraine launched their counteroffensive. Ukraine's also making progress in the north. If they can capture this village here, there will be a huge salient that will collapse due to not being able to be resupplied. So I think the goal is to surround Bakhmut and make it a kill zone. If they can cut off this road with mortar and artillery, the Russians in the ruins of Bakhmut aren't going to do pretty well. So what's Russia's plan to swing the momentum in their favor? Kyiv claims massive Russian buildup near Kharkiv. Ukrainian military leaders say that Russia has assembled 100,000 soldiers in the east for an attack to draw reserves from the counteroffensive. So for the last six weeks, Ukraine has been very focused on Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and the Bakhmut area. But the one front that Ukraine is not focused on is in Luhansk. So to the east, it's Luhansk. To the west, it's Kharkiv. So Russia's thinking, maybe it's a good idea. Let's send 900 tanks and 100,000 soldiers and see if we can get a rapid advance in order to recapture the city of Kupiansk, recapture Liman, and their ultimate fantasy would be getting Izium back. I don't think it's going to go well, but Russia's going to keep trying. Just think about it. Since... Since the day that the Russian military captured uh, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, that was over 12 months ago, what has the regular Russian military accomplished? It was the Wagner Group that captured Bakhmut. But in the last 12 months, what has the regular Russian military done offensively? And their track record has not been impressive at all. Good news for Ukraine. President Biden has officially, I guess, filled out the paperwork and approved European countries to start the training of Ukrainian pilots on F-16s. We're all frustrated by this timeline, but the training, 100% for sure, is starting next week. Uh, the timeline is six to eight months before F-16s will be flying over the skies in Ukraine. Earliest January... 
latest March of 2024. The next story, unfortunately, is a sad one. Over the last six months, I've shared numerous videos from the front of Roman. Uh, if you've been watching my channel, you know who Roman is. And yesterday on Instagram, Roman put out a story explaining why he's not been sharing as many videos lately. So I'm just going to share with you what Roman wrote. Friends, thank you to everyone who writes and asks how I'm doing. I'm not in combat, so don't worry. But now I have no desire to communicate or post anything. After my last mission, my health deteriorated. The head works at 20% efficiency. All processes are slowed down and blurred. Concentration and memory are unpleasant. Contusions, TBI, so this is traumatic brain injury, are a very bad thing. A horrible feeling that the war has not yet been won, and I most likely won't be able to fight normally anymore. So Roman is disclosing that he has traumatic brain injury. He suffered a concussion several weeks ago, and he was hopeful that he could have a quick recovery and return to his units and his duties on the front lines, but um, TBI can take a very long time to recover from. So unless he can get medically cleared to return to his duties as a sniper on the front lines, he can't go back. I know that Roman sometimes watches my videos, so if he sees this, I just want to thank him personally. He's done so much for the war effort and so much for his country, and he will continue to do a lot for his country, even if he can't serve in the trenches on the front lines. So this is one of Roman's last videos that I never shared. He posted this on Twitter on July 13th. So let me just share uh, one of his most recent videos. Hey, what's this for green? It's Roman again. Yeah, long time without connection because I had lots of work here. And uh, okay, we in Russians, ex-Russian trench right now. So, stay uniform and uh, also must be very careful because many surprises here okay so we successfully continue our counter-attack operation and uh, keep on liberating our land everything good once again to Roman, thank you for everything you've done. You're still my hero. Get well soon. Final clip I have for you is a Ukrainian defender uh, calling his dad on the phone to wish him a happy birthday while under Russian artillery fire. I thought <laughs> Море щастя, море позитиву. Ох, як порохом запахло. Порохом пахне. А на охоронці та бануцині, та бід, ми брідний сні, та близько. Ой, бля, хамуха. No subtitles, but I think you could feel what he was saying. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth, keep defending democracy.